All right, here's a quick lesson on some harder chord shapes because lately I've been trying to teach my students how to do some trickier chords. And it's sometimes a challenge to come up with something that actually sounds kind of nice. It doesn't just sound all smooth, like smooth jazz music. So here's something I came up with to learn a lot of new shapes. And I'll just play it a few times. Here's C major 7. So this is on the third fret. So I'm just going to play it and then I'll explain it. So there's a lot of chords in here that are pretty common, except for like one or two of them. Um, so it's kind of a useful chord progression to get comfortable with a lot of the jazzier chords that are built from the fifth string. So there's different shapes to play this song that would happen on the sixth string. The first chord is C major 7. And you can hit the top string if you want, or you can just hit the middle four. I tend to just strum the middle four strings. Although I think I might have been hitting that because I wasn't thinking about it. But. So this is third fret, fifth, fourth, fifth, and then the third fret on top. So it's kind of like this bar chord, but you add this um, note that's one note down from, from that one. That's C major 7, so it goes twice in the bass and two strums. So bass, bass, strum, strum. Then you move this finger up one fret. Now this chord is either a C sharp minor 7 flat 5 or a half diminished chord, or it's just C major 7 with a new bass note. So C major 7 over C sharp. So that's C major 7. C sharp, half diminished, or minor 7 flat 5, and then D minor 7, and I just add my pinky on the 8th fret, and D minor 7 is like a D minor chord, but you lift up your pinky. So the bass goes up, like chromatically there, and then it goes to the next chord is F major 7, which is exactly the same as the first chord, but on the 8th fret. So that's 8, 10, 9, 10. And the next chord is probably the hardest one in the song, it's F major 9. So this goes middle finger on 8, 7, pinky on 9. And then third finger on eight. So the weird thing is that these two fingers feel a little awkward. So F major seven, F major nine, and then you do G seven on the tenth fret. And this actually sounds good if you hit the top note. And here I just do two strums. So that's this, the really common, this is the really common G7, or I mean 7 shape on the 5th string, because all these chords are built from the 5th string. So this is on 10th fret, 10, 12, 10, 12. And then the next chord is called G9. This one's pretty easy. You do middle finger on 10, first finger on 9, and then these two fingers on 10 on the G and B string. You do two strums, so... And the last chord is also a really standard shape. This is G7, it's 10, 9, 10, 8. So the ending is kind of fast, so it's... And at the end I do two notes, I go 10, 8. But I do it with these fingers, because I'm at this shape. And my pinky's already ready to go. So then back down to the beginning. So C major 7, C sharp, half diminished, or minor 7, flat 5, D minor 7, 
F major 7, F major 9, G7, G9, G7, two notes. So now I'll just break down where this, how this stuff relates to music theory. So this is C major 7. And a major 7 chord is a 1, 3, 5, 7. That's the definition of it. So here's the root note. This is the 1. This is the 5. This is the 7. This is the 3. And then you can add the optional 5 up on top. So the voicing is 1, 5, 7, 3, 5. And then the next chord is either it's either still the same chord, so all the music theory would be the same, but this would be the sharp one or flat two. Or you could think about it as a new chord, and this would be the one on C sharp, the flat five right here, flat seven, and then flat three. So that's a diminished chord is one flat three, flat five, and the half diminished is you add the flat seven in. Or you can call it a minor 7, flat 5, or a half diminished. So the voicing is 1, flat 5, flat 7, flat 3. And the next chord is D minor 7. So a minor chord is 1, flat 3, 5, but a minor 7 chord is 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7. So right here, this would be a standard minor, but when we lift our pinky up, we have the flat 7. So it's 1, 5, flat 7, flat 3, 5. And that's D minor 7 because this note is D. And then I just add two notes just to make it sound a little bit more musical. So that, again, that's D minor 7, 1, 5, flat 7, flat 3, 5. Now we have F major 7, so it's the same music theory as this chord, the same definition. So it's 1, a major 7 is 1, 3, 5, 7, but right here it turns out the voicing is 1, 5, 7, 3, 5. And then the major 9 is kind of a more challenging chord, and the definition of a major 9 chord is 1, 3, 5, 7 which is why it's major, because it's not a flat 7, 7, and then the 9. But we only have four notes here, so we drop out the 5, but that doesn't affect what we call the chord. So it's 1, 3, 7, 9. Since we have the 7, this isn't called the 2, it's called the 9. Sort of sounds like John Mayer. So 1, 3, 7, 9. That's F major 9, because we're on F, and then G7. So a dominant 7 chord, or a 7 chord, is 1, 3, 5, flat 7. And basically, it's just like a major chord, but we add the flat 7 right there. So the voice seems 1, 5, flat 7, 3, 5. And this is a, instead of a major 9, which would have been that shape, it's a dominant 9, or just a 9 chord. It's the same, same thing. So it's 1, 3, flat 7, 9. So it's almost like the major 9 if I would have had the regular 7, but we have flat 7, so it's a regular 9 chord. And this chord is pretty useful, I find. And then the last chord is also dominant 7, just like this one, but it's a different voicing. So it's 1, 3, flat 7, 1, instead of 1, 5, flat 7, 3. And that's also G7. This is G7 because of G, G9, because we're on G, G7. And I just add two notes, kind of to echo these two notes earlier. So C major 7, C sharp, minor 7, flat 5, D minor 7, F major 7, F major 9, G7, G9, G7.
last thing is I was trying to figure out how you would play these last chords up here. And this is kind of a good challenge. So you can go. And this would be G7. And if you only play up through the B string, this is the shape. And this chord is like this. So, and the last shape's real awkward. That's G7, that's this equivalent. Just because of the stupid B string tuning. So, G7, G9, and G7. And there's the two notes. So, that's pretty hard to do. I find it much harder than doing this. Especially that chord. That chord is not too bad, but this is super awkward. So yeah, it's kind of a cool way to do it. There's a more advanced lesson. I've just been trying to get these new chord shapes. Because um, when I first started learning guitar, I, I learned a lot of these harder shapes. And I just don't really like jazz music that much, so I didn't know what to do with them. So I'm trying to come up with some stuff that's not too jazzy. And it is useful for learning music theory to, to encounter these harder shapes. Because then when you see the simpler music theory that you might actually use day to day, it's not that bad. So. Anyways, hope this was helpful to a few people. Okay, bye.